time for another stock review. This time we are talking Ferrari. Look at this. We are going to review Ferrari for you. Watch to the end of this video because you can win $100 in cash. I'm giving away 100 bucks in cash and some merchandise. And now on with the review. This will be a very exciting uh, uh, review. I quite like this. And we actually have an owner of a Ferrari live on the show, going to call in in a minute. So I'll just give you a little preview. He's sat in the green room right now. Here he is, Martini Racer, owns a Ferrari. Just give us a wave. He's going to be, he'll be, on, he'll be on the show in just a couple of seconds, all right? So we're going to have an owner of a Ferrari as well live on the show. This is going to be good. So we're going to go through all the figures of uh, Ferrari, whether it's a buy, a hold, a sell for you. And uh, look at this, very exciting. Who wants to own some shares in Ferrari? Tell you what, it's not been around as a dividend paying stock for that long either. So there you go. Maybe you can't afford a Ferrari, but you, you like to own this company, right? Even better, to be honest, if you own the company, it's better than owning the car, really, if you ask my opinion. Anyway, there you go. Looking very cool, right? We all love the look and the sound and the smell of Ferrari. It's the one car, I think, which can remain uh, a gas car forever. But we're going to find out in a minute. Do they even do they have an electric uh, Ferrari? Would you buy it if they did? Interesting, that. All right, let's get straight into it. If it's your very first time here, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate the thumbs up and give us a uh, smash the like as well, help the channel grow. I'm going to give you an honest review using algorithmic software, unbiased, no one pays me, no one sponsors me uh, to share my opinions. They are just based upon numbers and that is it. If it's a good buy, it's a good buy. If it's not, it's not. I'll tell you who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside. I will give you the full intrinsic value. I will give you the balance sheet, the debt, the loans, the positions, the just about everything that you need to decide whether Ferrari is a good to buy or not. Right, let's start off nice and simple, uh, and then let's get deep into the stock. So first of all, we're going to uh, take a look at the very, very basic information, and then let's build our way into it as we go. Right, of course, what is Ferrari? Well, does it need any introduction? Probably not. Ferrari NV is a holding company. Um, perhaps uh, when, our, when we get our guest on the show, Martini Racer, in a minute, you can tell me what NV stands for. I've often wondered, Ferrari NV. I could Google it or just ask somebody who owns a Ferrari. He might know. If not, I'll Google it. Ferrari NV. What does it mean? It's a holding company which engages in the design, engineering, production and sale of luxury sports cars. The firm's model includes the F12 uh, Berlinetta, the 488 GTB, the 488 Spider, the 458 Special, California T La Lafari Hybrid, or LO, and Lafari and the FF4 wheel drive. I own all those, by the way, every one of those. Uh, it, part it participates in car racing, such as Formula One. The company was founded by Enzo and Selmo Ferrari in 1939 and is headquartered in Maranello, Italy. The listed name uh, is for race is Ferrari NV. And of course, remember the days of Shuey, Schumacher, of course, for, uh, driving for a Ferrari. I've seen him a few times. Employees, 4,919. Small company, really. Around since 1939, maintenance requirement, not regarded as high risk using margin if you decided to buy it that way. Uh, okay, market cap, $86 billion. It's not a small company by any means. High today, 337, 52-week uh, high, 372. Price to earnings ratio, 48 times, 48.65. It's not cheap. However, you need to compare it to the competition. Tesla has been as high as 120. I think it's running around about 65 right now. So is it better value than 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 than, um, than for uh, Tesla? You need to decide that. It's not just about the earnings ratio, of course. That is purely on based upon the price that you're paying today for the stock. I'm not interested in buying stock prices. I'm interested in buying companies. Is it overbought? Is it oversold? We'll find out in a minute. Dividend. Yes, you can earn a very small, but nevertheless, a dividend with uh, Ferrari. Has it gone up? Is it a dividend king? How does it compare to Coca-Cola, J&J? &J? We'll find out in a minute. All right. 
What do Global Star, what do Morning Star say? I beg your pardon. What do they say about the company? Not that they pay any attention to this. This is all paid, promoted uh, reviews, but we nevertheless, we've got to start basic somewhere. Buy 54%, hold 45%, and sell. Nobody's selling it. All right. A growing global population of high net worth individuals expands Ferrari's addressable market and supports volume growth without sacrificing exclusivity. All right. What about the bears adopting electric vehicle, adopting electric vehicle technology? There we go. We've answered it. Presents a risk since part of the user experience involves the sound generated by a, a Ferrari internal combustion engine. Now, I have to say, I have to say, I'm all about the EVs. I'm all about the environment. However, did you know, and I know this because uh, Jeremy Clarkson told me once, did you know that a Ferrari at, uh, um, is less polluting than every, pretty much every other gas car because its engine is so well refined that even though it uses gas and you might go it's a polluter, the engine is so clean and so well refined, it actually produces less pollution than your Ford Fiesta or your Ford Focus, who's, uh, you know, whatever, regarded as a more economically environmentally friendly car. Not necessarily the case. Anyway, fair value 275. Well, we'll establish what a fair value is uh, in a moment. Economic moat wide. What does that mean? Well, that means competition. That means uh, that means balance sheet. That means mar means margins. That means uh, balance sheet and cash on hand. That's what that means. Uncertainty, medium, stewardship, standard. Okay. Been beating on earnings pretty much consistently uh, as we've been watching it. All right. What about the chart, the bar, the, the, uh, the line chart uh, we, from 2016? It looks a bit like the S&P. A dip in 2020. Uh, let's have a look. Let's, let's, let's have a look. Dip in 2020. There we go. And uh, then rose again. It seems a very solid company. I don't think this would have much of a macro concern like COVID because let's be honest, if you are able to buy a Ferrari uh, and you own a Ferrari, like our guest on the show today, he's probably thinking, how does this apply? Uh, what's he going to say about me? Um, honestly, if you're the sort of customer that can buy a Ferrari, uh, you're able to, you're not, you're not being, you're not being too um, pressured by, uh, 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 um, by outside macro conditions, even though your investments may be impacted by COVID or uh, wars and inflation. Of course, of course it would, but you're not buying a car the same way. You, you, you could park your car, leave it in the garage and not, doesn't matter if you're using it, perhaps you can just hold it. I don't know, but it's not going to be as affected as, uh, as much as a Ford or a regular car. Uh, I, I don't think it's the sort of thing you can own and not be, you know, be exclusive, if you like, away from the the day to day macro conditions. Anyway, as you can see, the chart bears that out. It's a proof in the pudding. The chart is pretty much steadily up all the time. Anyway, no surprise there. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer. That's how the world works, right? Okay, so let's have a look. Who else is buying this? Uh, it doesn't actually say on here other people that are buying this, which is unusual. I've never seen that before. Normally, there's something down here at the bottom here saying, you know, it's owned by other company, other people that buy X, Y, and Z, but we're not showing that. Anyway, let's move on to the numbers before we get our guest live on the show who actually owns a Ferrari. Uh, let's have a look at the... Um, Let's have a look at the website. Looks very, very cool, as you'd expect from Ferrari. The best in the business, like Apple, when it comes to marketing, building a website, we're not going to see a website like we saw the other day from that Chinese, was it Alibaba or somebody like that? It was an awful website, the worst website I've ever seen. Ferrari know how to build a website. They know how to brand their image and look good. It looks fantastic. Of course it does. The name sells itself, dead easy. Right, let's now look at if we compared this to the S&P 500. Before we do the numbers, I'm doing things slightly different today. All right, so let's look at a back test. If we bought the S&P back in 2016, that's in blue and Ferrari in red. Has to be, right? I'm going to ask our guest in a minute what colour Ferrari he has. Is it a red one or a black or a yellow one? Or a white one, I believe, isn't there? Is there a white one as well? Anyway, but like James Bond. Well, that was a Lotus, wasn't it? My dad had a Lotus, by the way, a Lotus Esprit. Anyway, that's another story. Uh, we can see Ferraris consistently beat in the S&P. Now, that's a very unusual chart. I was struck by that. When I saw that, I thought, 
a stock that consistently at the same sort of uh, general movement of the S&P beating it. That's an interesting stock over since 2016. So we're talking like seven years now, eight years now. So it's a reasonable history beating the S&P consistently in a, in a not a you know not a spiky sort of growth but as a, a, a steady line i quite like that that looks that looks good to me so if you put 10 grand in the snp you'd have 26000 26000 uh in, in uh, 10000 in uh, ferrari you'd now have 75000 maybe you have enough to buy one i don't know anyway i've never bought one so i don't know all right anyway let's look at uh, the dividends the dividends. Uh, they started making dividend payments in 2016. Um, 46 cents, 63 cents, 71 cents, 103, 113. So far, paying every time and consistently beating would qualify for a dividend king. Of course, dividend kings have to go for at least 20 odd years and consistently beat like Coca-Cola and J&J. &J. It hasn't done that. Does it want to become a dividend king? My guess is it probably does. So it's consistent. However, then it spoiled the party. We went to 86, back up again, and then back up again. They spoiled their record of being a dividend king by one single payout. If they hadn't done that one, got that one right, we'd have been on a nice trajectory. But nevertheless, they've just missed. But now we're paying 181 cents a share. So it's very, very good, consistent. Other than that one little drop, it looks interesting, right? I'm liking it. I'm thinking, this could be interesting. Anyway, let's now go over to the figures. But before we do, before we go to the figures, we're going to get a guest on the show that owns a Ferrari, and I'm going to ask him a few questions. So welcome on the show. Before I do, make sure that you've uh, liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Have you done that? Hopefully you've done that. All right, let's go and then welcome our guest live on the show. Uh, all the way, I think he's over in Turkey at the moment, even though he's from the U uh, the US. We've got Martini Racer on the show, who owns a Ferrari. Martini Racer, how are you, mate? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm loving it. Happy New Year to you, by the way. Yeah, Happy New Year. Can you mute your YouTube? Uh, oh, I think you fixed it now. Yeah, we're all good yeah, now. It's, it's been muted already. All right, brilliant. Uh, so are you still over there in Turkey, is it? Yeah, I'm still in Turkey. Still over there in Turkey. Now, thank you very much for calling in today. Of course, we're doing a review on Ferrari, so, that, so we won't talk too long because I want to get on with the numbers. But uh, Martini Racer, thanks for calling in. And uh, you own a Ferrari. Which Ferrari do you own? I have a 2009 F430. Lovely. F1. And have you got the key to show me? Yeah, I have the key. Let's see the key. Always goes with me. <laughs> hey, lovely, fantastic. There's the key there to his is. Ferrari. Now then, are you a shareholder Ferrari or just you just own the car itself? I just own the car right now. I have not bought stock in it, but I keep thinking to do it. I know. Doesn't doesn't that chart look yeah. good compared to the it S and P and the dividend? Apart from that one uh, payout, consistently going up and gone up from forty six to one hundred and eighty one right now. So we've got some huge yeah. growth there, and uh, so not not too bad at all. Now, as a as a Ferrari owner, um, you obviously love the car. Would you first of all buy an EV version of a Ferrari? No, I wouldn't. I would not. <laughs> <laughs> I've do, got do, the one I have and I'll probably keep it forever. <laughs> forever. I got to be honest, even though I am very pro the environment, very pro, uh, you know, EV, if I'm going to buy a Ferrari, it's got to sound like one, smell like one, look yeah. like one, feel like one, the rumble, the, you know, and as I explained earlier, yeah. Jeremy Clarkson uh, told me once years ago that, that uh, a Ferrari, even though it's regarded as a, you know, a gas guzzler, if you like, it's more efficient. It doesn't produce as much pollution as a Ford Fiesta or a F Ford Focus because the engine's clean. Have you got any uh, thoughts on that or do you, do you know anything about that? It's, it's very interesting. Um, once you hit like a certain RPM in these cars, the exhaust actually goes wide open. There's no more. It bypasses the catalytic converters and goes straight out the back. It's part of the reason why they're so loud. Um, Biggest problem I get driving mine is not so much the speeding, it's the noise it makes. Everybody complains about the noise, but I don't know why. <laughs> but you like it, right? 
Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. I've had it for I've had it for almost exactly two years now. I bought it, it in I bought it in January of 2021. Is it over there in the, in the states? It's actually in China right now. That's where it's I bought China. it. China. Of course it is. Yeah. You know, you know why would it not be in China? You live in America. You're on your boat in Turkey, and your Ferraris in China. Obviously, yeah. what, what are you doing over there? That's where I was doing Formula Four racing. My my wife is from China, so I've been living there for a couple of years now. So brilliant, brilliant. I love it. Well, why not? Sounds <laughs> sounds brilliant. So, uh, it, it, as an owner of a Ferrari, uh, do you do you see that the company continuing to grow? Do you do, with, with recession and macro conditions? Do you think the name will ever go away? Think, is it a good investment? I, do you think? I think they're, it's it's not so much their cars that they sell. You know, they have all these little Ferrari boutique stores everywhere. They sell, you know, bags, keychains, hats, ah. t-shirts. It's it's actually a lot. I think a lot of their money that comes in is from merchandise because of the brand. This is such an iconic brand. Well, you have just touched on a very, very good investment st- strategy then because, of course, if you are a brand, an image, the whole package – There's more, I would imagine, if I'm Ferrari and I've got a bag or a watch or a necklace or a hat or a T-shirt, my margins are far higher on those items and my profit is far higher than any car. Agreed? Because you can charge 10 grand for a bag, right? You know, that's like another thing too. Not everybody can own a Ferrari, but you can can own something that's got Ferrari on it. Yeah, but you're always going to pay a premium though, right? Ferrari yeah. bag is going to cost a lot of money, right? So yeah. I would imagine from a business point of view, as an investor, there could be potential here because the name sells itself and it's, it's always a going brand, to be so. luxury brands, yeah. right? And so the margins are going to be through the roof, right? I mean, they'll tell you, of course, well, our bags are better than your average uh, average bag and it costs a lot more to make it, which I'm sure it does, but still the margins are going to be higher in a luxury brand. All right. I never thought of that. That's a really good point. I think, I think the only place where they lose money is driving Formula One, but they may be making enough on advertisement with advertisers and everything else now. I think Amazon Web Service is a big yeah. uh, sponsor of theirs. The, another yeah. big one is uh, Shell Oil. Right. So uh, I think Martin- I think as long... I think as long as Ferraris are being built, you always will have some sort of model that is gasoline powered. Yeah, they, they yeah. will. They're gonna they're gonna dive into the electric. They do have some hybrids already. Right. Um. The new there's the two nine six GTB. That's that's a hybrid. I have a friend that has one of those. Um. It's another race car driver that lives in China. And then you've got the Ferrari SF ninety, which is also a hybrid. A very nice car, actually. Very Martin, expensive. Martini Racer, thank you for calling in. This was just a quick chat today, so I want to get straight back to the figures. But thank you for giving that little insight as an owner into Ferrari. And uh, the, the extra, you just made me think now about all the name and the brand and the merchandise. This could be a, this could be an interesting one for me to buy. So, Martini, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Have a good day. Cheers, mate. Thank you very thank much you. indeed. Thank, thank you, Martin. You're welcome. Pleasure. So there you go. Interest is tough. Now let's look. Let's look at the numbers and uh, what do you think of this then? So let's start off with the um, the valuation base case, best case. Now you're going to overpay for this stock. You're always going to overpay. It's a brand. It's a name. You've got to be prepared to over overpay for this. You're not going to get it discounted. It's not going to be cheap. You can't walk into Ferrari and go, can I buy a Ferrari with a 25% discount? You're not even going to get in the shop. You are going to overpay. You've got to be prepared for a long-term investment. Overvaluation is 66%. Uh, overvaluation is 73%. You're buying a brand, you're buying a name, it's going to cost you money. But however, if you keep it long term, you may, you may make your money. Anyway, let's have a look at it. The intrinsic value, uh, as uh, hang on, let's go down here a minute. Here we go. Persistent overvaluation detected. No surprise. I've said this. It's going to be expensive. You are going to overpay for it. You are going to have to hold it, and you're going to have to understand that, that you are paying for a brand, a name. The uh, the valuation is, uh, is, is, is overpriced, persistent overvaluation. Historical valuation indicates this stock price has continuously exceeded its intrinsic value. This enduring 
Overvaluation may be indicative of market overconfidence or non-fundamental influences. People are owning the stock because it's a Ferrari. So is it a good opportunity to make money on? Well, you might want to own it because you like to own the company and you like to have shares in the company. However, can you make money on it? Well, let's have a look. As you can see, the stock continually rises. In other words, why does the stock go up in value? Because people keep buying it. If you keep buying it, it just goes up and then it could drop like a stone. Will it drop like a stone? Well, since 2016, no, it consistently goes up. And you look at these dips, it's very much like Coca-Cola and J&J, &J, a rich man's source of funds. It's a piggy bank for the rich. It's how it works, right? You, the, you, it, it, go, it sells off and then comes straight back up again. So let's say you are a Ferrari owner and you're up here and you've made loads of money, right? You've had it for a while and Tesla comes out or SpaceX, I don't know, becomes public. Oh, let me sell some Ferrari. Let me take some money out of the Ferrari bank. You sell it. You buy it, you buy some SpaceX, and up we go again. It returns its value as the moment it gets sold off, it comes back up again. All right, so that's what you're paying for here. Q3 business strength led to 24% revenue growth and a 40% 42% rise in EBIT with a 27.4% margin. Shipments edged up, bolstered by product uh, mix and, and customization, particularly in EMA and Americas. While mainland China and uh, APAC were mixed, the hybrid cars outpaced uh, internal combustion engines. <laughs> um making up 51% uh, of deliveries. Revenue surged 26% at a constant currency, strengthened by high uh, personalizations. Adjusted EBIT reflected a flavorable mix product demand uh, and pricing. So people are buying the EVs. Industrial free cash flow uh, was robust at 301 million. Uh, sorry, 301 million euros, that is. That's the euro sign for those of you who don't know. 301 million euros, despite a capital expenditure of 205 million. Full year guidance was uplifted uh, based uh, on these results, a positive product mix and customization trend, as well as more favorable US dollar outlook. The positive outlook extends into Q4 and uh, sets a confident tone for 2024. Now then, I would, would imagine their balance sheet is going to be good. Let's have a look. The revenue, uh, it dipped here in 2020, so it did have some uh, impact on COVID, but uh, not a great deal. Look, it's virtually flat. I mean, it's a really good chart. This, it's it's sort of thing you want to own because it and own forever. Uh, I don't think it's the right thing to prep buy if you're late sixties and you're trying to grow a portfolio. But if you are um, either if you're at that age and you just want to own it because you want to own it, then fine. Or you're younger and you want just own it for life. You just want to own the Ferrari brand and maybe that's good for you. Uh, anyway, five point one billion. Uh, March uh, 23, 5.3, uh, June 29, 5.5, and now we are in uh, September, 5.8. Steady growth estimates is good. Not a massive surge, so you're not going to get value for money on the stock price for quite a while. It's going to have to go for, you have, you're going to have to hold this stock for a couple of years to get your money out if that was your uh, incentive. But the dividend is interesting. Operating income up 9% on the most recent range. You can see it steadily growing. Net income up 10% on the most recent range. I think uh, that uh, this isn't going to be impacted at all by EVs. I think. Um, I think people are still going to want to buy the brand. I've always said this, when EVs crushes the regular car, the luxury cars will still exist. The Ferraris and all this stuff, the brand will still exist. It, in fact, will, will probably become more valuable because we've now seen, uh, you know, all the other combustion engines die. You know, you're going to, you're going to be left with the best of the, uh, the, the best of the best. You're going to be left with, you know, the really iconic brands that are just, you know, you know, it's a piece of history. Uh, that's it. 
Uh, I think Chris Pickering has just mentioned it there. Take a piece of history. That's right. As EV starts to become more and more and more, I think the Ferrari brand of you know will become more valuable in time because uh, it was it will be what the car used to be and uh, where Ford and Chrysler and Jeep and uh, whatever else that will all just disappear. But you've got Ferrari and Lamborghini and st things like this, which will just live on forever. I honestly believe that. Um, there's always room at the top, as they say. Uh, cash flow up 14%. This is interesting. We have a little sort of um, a secular cash flow issue here. Um, watch this. Um, I reckon. Hmm. I wonder what that is. I wonder if that's, like I said before, a rich man's piggy bank. Uh, it just drops and goes up and drops and goes up. Yeah, that's probably what's happening there. Anyway, uh, capital expenditure. We've been spending money recently uh, when this pub company went bi public, uh, building out the infrastructure. This will probably be to do with its EVs, I would imagine. Uh, anyway, they were spending money. Operating cash flow, though, is going up. This is very good. Look, the cash flow is going up while they're able to spend money. You don't see that very often. Capital expenditure, they're spending money, but the cash flow is going up. So cash flow, the money is flowing for Ferrari, even though they can spend on investing in the company. It's a win-win, solid company. Right, let's look at the balance sheet. Let's see how well the balance sheet looks, all right? 7.9 billion in assets. 7.9 billion in assets, okay? Cash, 1 billion. Um, 1 billion out of 7.9 is in cash and receivables 1.8. So they've got loads of money. They're not going, they, they've got cash on hand to do stuff. Liabilities is about 75% of their assets. So we're okay. We're not more, we don't want to be more liabilities than assets. Of course. What about long-term debt? 2.5 billion. Half of their liabilities is debt. So they've got some debt. 50% in fact. 50% of their liabilities is debt, long-term debt. But, you know, a good catalyst for the stock when the rates come down. If you've got a solid company like Ferrari with a good name and a good brand and a good business and all the rest of it, good margins, and we'll look at that in a minute if they have that efficiency of the company. If you've got long-term debt, but you've got plenty of cash, they've got, um, they've got uh, what? Um... 2.5 billion in long-term debt, cash 1 billion. So they've got half, they could they could half their debt tomorrow if they wanted to. They're not going to, but they could if they wanted to. Um, if the company has got a good high margins, and we can already see it sneaking in under the screen there, um, that's not an issue. I don't like a company with a lot of debt, but... When you've got a lot of debt and you are a good company with plenty of cash flow and the the brand is good and the, and the business is good and the margins are good and there's no competition, you, when the rates come down, your stock price could rally because your profits could rally because the rates on your, on your biggest expense or at least 50% of your expense are going to go down significantly. So there you go. Um, see? Long-term debt, 50%. Imagine how that's going to be impacted on their bottom line when the rates come down. So look at the margins. Of course, it, it, this was in, inevitable. The gross margin, 49%. Operating margin, 26%. Net margin, 20%. Margins are good and uh, the operating margin is increasing. Um, return on investment, ROIC uh, is going up. ROCE is going up as well. That's interesting. Right. Strong business. This is what you've got to look at. Profitability score. Well, it's obvious, like we just spoke about with the merchandise and all the other paraphernalia, you know, the profitability is going to be ridiculous. You know, if you want to buy yourself a hat <laughs> and you buy a Walmart brand, 99 cents. You can buy a Walmart hat with Walmart written on it. They probably give it you for free, but you can buy it for 99 cents. Now you want to buy a Ford cap. You're going to go into the Ford garage and you're going to spend oh, $10 because you're going to buy a Ford cap. 
All right. Remember the Ford cap costs as much to make as the Ferrari cap, but the Ferrari cap is going to cost you 50 bucks. So profitability is great for a brand like this. Right? No, we knew it before we looked at it. All right. So solvency score, no issue at all. Like I just said, they've got debt, but they've got cash. And because their margins are so good and their solvency is so good, uh, sorry, not their solvency, their margins are so good and their cash is so good and the brand is so good and the projections are so good and everything else, their return on investment is so good that even though they've got some debt, their solvency is golden. It's not as high as I've seen at like Apple at 86%, but I mean, Apple is the biggest company in the world, right? But their solvency is great. So they're not going bust. You can buy this business and know it's not going bust. You, the only thing you'd have to note, though, is if you buy a Ferrari share, and I might even buy one now for the hell of it, you know, you surround yourself by great people, you become a better person, right? Do you want to own a share in Ford? Or do you want to own a share in Ferrari? I say Ferrari, right? So I might buy a share for the sheer hell of it, all right? And I'm going to be up on it. Not within the next two years, though. I am going to make money on it. I'll, I'll say, hang on a minute. Um, I've got, I haven't got, I'm not going to have value. That's what I mean for two years. I could buy Ferrari today and uh, probably be up on the stock in five minutes. Obviously, the stock can move quickly. What I mean is I'm not going to own a share of value for a couple of years. If I'm going to buy a share of Ferrari, I've got to know it might go up because more people buy it tomorrow, next week, next month. Great. But I haven't got a value stock yet for at least two years. Now, it's not like Coca-Cola. You can buy on the dip. You can't, you're not going to get it under value. Coca-Cola and J&J &J were under value. I don't think you're ever going to get Ferrari as under value. I just don't think it's possible. It's not going to happen. People aren't going to sell out and make the stock cheap. You're not going to walk into Ferrari garage and say, I want a Ferrari 25% 25, 25 discount. They'll say, no, we're putting the price up. We're not reducing it. So you're not going to get that. So if you buy Ferrari, no, you can make money on it. The dividends are going up. They look like a dividend king potential in the future, apart from that one miss. Um, however, you're not going to own a stock of value for a couple of years. Anyway, upside, 42%. That's what Wall Street say. Best case scenario. We're not really on a best case scenario. We're on a 7%. They're exactly what I just said. Exactly what I just said. You can own the S&P this year and probably make more money on it this year. This year, even though overall the S&P is outperformed the S&P, where it is today at this valuation, but it could be wrong. We could end up with this one. I would say it's somewhere in the middle, about 15%, which is the S&P anyway. Um, and, but there's also a downside to it. All right. So I would say we're about here. I would say about 15%. You probably can make more money at the current price on the S&P this year with less risk. But if you want to own Ferrari in two years from now, you're going to be up. You know, you're going to have value in two years. Anyway, compare the competition. I don't really think you can other than Porsche, Toyota and, and BYD. I mean, we're not comparing it to every, every automaker. It needs to be compared to Porsche and Lamborghini and other luxury brands. So do that. Do your research and see if Porsche, uh, Porsche, as we say in England, is a better value. You can go and uh, do the research. I'll give you the link for that in a minute. Right. Let's have a look here. And uh, percent of shares shorted. <laughs> Basically nobody. Right. No one's short in the stock. It's too expensive for, you know, Lucid and, and, and Mullen and people like that to get involved. Too expensive. It's an S&P type value stock. Remember, you can fractional share, but not everyone has access to that. So, uh, you know, not everyone, people, people that try and play around with, you know, Mullen and Lucid and all these companies aren't wasting their time. So there's, well, they're not getting involved, basically. So there's no short interest, none, none that we can even count. So no one's banking on the stock going down. And why would you? Why, you know, it'd be a bit of a crazy thing to do. Anyway, what about insider trading? Anything at all? Uh, nothing to show of. Uh, I don't see anything. No, nothing there. What about uh, what about um, sentiment of the stock? Where is it likely to go? The last ninety days, 
all positive, 6.4% bad, 30 days, eh, 10%, not really that much to worry about. Last seven days, all good, no, all good and neutral today, no, no news today. Good, sentiments good, no issues. It's a good solid company, this. Um, it's no surprise, really. Uh, latest news, three days ago, three days ago, what did our friends at CNBC say? Well, should we have a listen? Ferrari, about a week ago, symbol R-A-C-E, obviously one of the world's leading luxury brands with a profitability of a software company. Um, limited production supports their pricing power and competitive yeah. advantage. This is a company that trades at, you know, for, a profitability is four times that of a traditional automaker and two times that of the consumer discretionary sector. In addition, you have the benefit that there's a movie coming out soon <laughs> on the brand. There you go. Uh, Jason. AXP, t and &E will continue to rise. I like it here. Jenny. Following my safe energy. Well, that's an interesting point. Okay, there's a movie coming out around Ferrari that will benefit the stock like Barbie, like, um, is it Mattel? So I didn't know about the movie. Uh, where's the movie information? I didn't know about the, the movie coming out. That makes it interesting. Um, that makes it interesting. So I am going to buy a share of Ferrari because I just want to own one. I think it's a good buy. The bit, well, I say a good buy. I've explained what I mean by that. But uh, anyway, let's uh, go and close up our review on on this one. So, I am going to buy a piece of Ferrari. The business is solid. I buy businesses, not share prices. Let's have a look. Uh, we are down this week. We are down. Uh, this month, uh, 5%. That looks good. Three months were ups, but we've got a dip. The dips don't come very often. Uh, it's a slight dip. Uh, it's a buy from me. It's a buy purely uh, for the dividend and the movie and everything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. And um, this stock is not supported on Robin Hood. I can't buy it on Robin Hood. Look at this. It says at the bottom, this stock is not supported on Robin Hood. I was just about to buy Robin uh, Ferrari. It's not available on Robin Hood. Now, of course, I can go somewhere else and buy it, but I'm not going to because I can't share it as part of my portfolio. Remember, my portfolio isn't to benefit me. It's to share with you what I'm doing. So I'm not going to uh, buy Ferrari simply because I can't show it as part of my growth on my portfolio. And that is important to me. So I'm not going to buy it. Not going to buy it. That's simple as that. It is a buy from me. I would buy one for the news, the information, the business, uh, the way it, uh, the, its growth. Uh, I would buy a share just for the hell of it, but I can't. So Click above my head if you uh, want all the links to my socials or my Alpha Spread. All my members get a discount to uh, Alpha Spread, which is the, the service that I use. Uh, members get a free plan. All look below in the description, or you can get the premium service and uh, of uh, Alpha Spread, so you can all benefit from that. Basically, making my membership for free. Uh, also, um, by the way, if you click above my head and down in the description, we're giving away a hundred bucks in cash, so you can buy a third of the stock of. Uh, of uh, of uh, Ferrari. Click above my head, look in the description, you'll find the link to that. We've got a giveaway as well. Over here, I'll put more information down here and down here, of uh, my full reviews and meet the CEO down here as well. And I interview CEOs on my show. So there you go. It is a buy from me. I can't buy it because I can't share it with my viewers and that's most important to me. But there you go. Ferrari. Interesting one. Thank you for Martini Racer for joining me today. It's a buy from me. It's a long-term hold. You buy it and never sell it. It's as simple as that. Uh, live on the dividends. But as I say, I can't buy it because I can't share with you on the screen the growth of it in a nice way that would make sense. Until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other.